as I as I've talked about a couple of times before in my previous video, um, I'm always curious to see you know after I see one event how events will play out, how the future of the game industry will um, spiral out of this from like a sort of a domino effect. And um, I've got my buddy Ethan here and again from the last discussion video link in the description and if you click the icon in the top right corner you can see his channel and go to it view whatever videos you want um and he's actually suggested this video idea this time it wasn't good to be back first yeah first time on the um discussion video wasn't my idea for the video but um we, we've talked about it and agreed that it's it's a pretty decent idea so um here we are um so i'm gonna start with a low-hanging fruit and say unlockable skins you know it, in the ps2 age we used to have um unlockable skins um and that's how i like it that's how i prefer it to be you know super meat boy and games like that still kind of do it where it's like you unlock skins but um as as you know like free to play games of course they they gotta make money back somehow so they sell those skins but plenty of other games it's like oh you, you can just buy this skin so um just to clarify as well in case it wasn't clear before we're going to be saying both the good things and the bad things of um the game industry you know like utopia hey um so we're gonna have to pause yeah oh hang on so people have to actually pay for tiny little like hats and outfits and all that sort of stuff yeah yeah like in team fortress 2 Is that you pay for them. um but yeah that's one of the points that I yeah i <clears throat> I stopped playing Team Fortress 2 right around the time that they started doing that, I think. Mm. Did they always do that? I can't remember. They've been doing it for a while. I'm not sure when they started, but because um, I I played it like later in its... Um, uh, I don't know. Later on in development, I guess. I mean, it wasn't really developing, but, you know like years after it came out so i'm i've just been known to it forever although team fortress 2 did create loot boxes and as i've carried on before it was the first game to have loot boxes in it so like bad valve oh really okay fuck valve that's a whole nother thing microtransactions another low-hanging fruit to talk about of course games shouldn't rely on microtransactions instead if if they claim that they've got a or make the money back, which they don't really have to spend that much money to make it back. They could um make other ways to make it back, like, you know, proper full-fledged DLCs or making other actual full games to sell that are just on lower budgets or something. Or selling merchandise, you know. Mm. Um, you know, like they used to. Yeah, there's a lot of ways you can make money without having to go down a certain route. Mm. The concern isn't so much. Where do you think that could be heading, though? Money, like, do you, if it continues to be an issue, where do you? Well, as as I was going to say, it's not so much about making um enough money to earn a profit or make a living. It's about making all the money in the world. And considering they're getting away with it relatively well, like relatively unscathed. I think it's probably going to stick microtransactions for quite a while. Although, with some things like Monster Hunter World being like fourth, um, biggest most played game on Steam right now, and so forth, and how it advertises itself as being like, well, if we put microtransactions, specifically loot boxes, in our games, and it would defeat the um purpose of the whole loot and shoot kind of genre of our game, it would destroy the whole concept in the heart of the game you know like it just take away from it so um that that earned them quite well reputation you know i myself certainly i'm looking into the game because of that if it comes on switch but i you know people are saying maybe they're never going to do that because it never ends on that even though they started all on nintendo devices um what is it Passion creation is the one that I'm biggest um, concerned about because, you know... Hang on, these, sorry. Yeah? Uh, can we can we pull... Things that I'm concerned about the direction of is passion creation within the industry. So, 
I myself see video games as a form of art, a medium like others, but it's um it's quite harder to pin down because it is so um different. Like there's no real solid thing to it. Like there is um paintings in movies, you know, it, it can be quite fluid and flexible. But um it's still a form of art to me whether or not it's a cinematic game like fucking Detroit Become Human or some shit. And um when you play a game like Metal Gear, I don't know if you ever have, but with that, there's a difference between any Metal Gear prior to Metal Gear Survive and Metal Gear Survive that like when you play the Metal Gears most of the thing that um attracts the fans to it is just the passion that you can feel like oozing out of the game from the creator like the fine attention to detail the the cinematography just working in with the jokes and the story and how it just all forms together in this great amalgamation of um aspects to to create this ultimate overarching picture and that just doesn't come together at all in Metal Gear Survive because they took away the original creator who'd been working with the team for 30 years now, um, Hideo Kojima, right? And, and like anyone that's played any of the Metal Gear games mm. prior to Survive and Survive would be able to tell you that it just, quote, doesn't feel like Metal Gear. And it's, be, it's just simply because there's no passion into it. They just see it as a corporate product to Yeah, you know what? You know what it's like? Yeah. It's like it's like taking but, to me, it's no different from having an author of like like a, a a famous author with a famous series or whatever of books. And uh then the author, I don't know, retires or passes away, and then they try to replace that with someone else. And that someone else is a different person, but they're trying to capture the same spirit and it's yeah mm. it's no it's no different it's just yeah yeah absolutely it is kind of like that but that is a bit different when that person is just a huge company that wants to make yearly releases to earn a profit off the brand recognition of said thing like for instance star wars <laughs> you know um what with it's like new animated mm. movie which is just gotten like huge dislikes and shit but um yeah that's a huge thing that i'm concerned about because that used to be quite um common in the past i mean it's always going to be around because like with indie games they're just being more and more like um about passion creation um and so forth with developers that are like i'm i'm sick of this corporate um business lifestyle and i i just want to get out and make my own games at my own work time and so forth and just pump something out that i'm actually passionate about care about with my own insight being um recognized and put into this um so i am concerned about more just like how how many games are going to be like of passion creation as opposed to corporate entities and products you know because that's generally what I enjoy most. I suppose but... that's why a lot of uh, I suppose that's why a lot of up and coming creators are heading towards uh, like websites like Kickstarter and Indiegogo and all that to crowdfund mm, yeah, all absolutely. their projects. That's that's another thing is um. So people are really trying to find a way to do their own thing. Mm. Well, if you heard about the YouTube, and I think of... that's something. So if you heard about what happened to Ubisoft, apparently, because I don't know if that dev was ever confirmed to be a dev, but um, they worked 30 hours overtime unpaid to rush out the yearly release jobs on ports for systems that they simply say to the publisher that we don't see how we can possibly do this um, because of the multiple different factors. It would just be a buggy mess, unoptimized yet the publisher still seeks to make them uh, put it on that system just so they can get the extra sales from that. And um, those 30 hours mm. are completely unpaid. And, you know, they're put into situations by the publishers to pump out stuff that they don't like, like Pandemic 
um they were bought one year in the very next they were liquidized when they were put under pressure to make um no way it was visceral that was pandemic was bought out and then sold by ea in one year but pandemic was um pushed to make multiplayer open world games when they just said simply that they're not comfortable in that sort of environment they're not confident in making those style of games it's not what they're known for it's not what they're used to yeah, they were forced into it by their publishers and you know ultimately ended up in the company going bankrupt and ea just being like yeah no we're, we're not helping you there just leaving them to die you know um but if they go past the publisher then you know with crowdfunding like you said which is how i hope things will go is probably going to go that way especially with um nintendo supporting them so much they've even got a new word for indies on the nintendo switch called nindies i don't know if you heard of that have you i haven't heard that one all right um it's kind of like yeah nintendo i haven't heard that one it's kind of like nintendo does a um a stream kind of thing for indies that they release there like every couple of months they're like oh here's here's a couple um new releases of indie games go check them out so indie developers are tending to go over there and a lot more are just leaving there because you know they they're locked away not able to see their families for like weeks on end you know so it, it's quite a um a hard life where they a lot of people consider them to be um treated like machines and not people so it really yeah, takes, no, it's it, like I said, with the passion thing it really takes out the passion and the joy of like that sort of job you know yeah i think we're going to see a lot more i think the industry is going to have a lot more turnover because you're going to have a lot of maybe it is experiencing a lot of turnover i don't know but uh because so many people grow up in video games these days and they're going to want to be developers and work on their own stuff and then they're going to join a big company because they've worked so hard to build their skills in that area mm. and then they're going to end up being so disillusioned yeah. with what's expected of them. another thing that i want to say that i hope to see is features for the disabled or accessibility um for everyone you know because because gaming to me is as i've stated multiple times i love it for the community that it brings you know you just feel at home like uh, there's sure there's plenty of grievers out there but generally people that like if you like a game with them you'll just be able to get in a conversation with them hang out with them you know they'll invite you to you xbox party or whatever and um it's all rather quite friendly but gaming has generally for multiple decades been exclusive to those who are um handy capable and fully hearing and eyesight um uh enabled i guess um so you know when they include features like i showed you in those videos where they have um stuff like colorblind mode like proper colorblind mode um text on screen proper visual audio feedback through the gameplay rather than just relying on like on overwatch where like the only way to know that someone's going to pull off one of their powerful moves is to hear them say their line then um you know it's best when games have stuff built into them and with with the xbox one x uh sorry the xbox one adaptive controller that's one of the biggest points where i was like oh shit they're actually going full-fledged um for the disabled i mean like when i first saw it i'm like that's probably going to be like hundreds of dollars but i i could be wrong because i might be uh improperly remembering this but um i think it was only like a hundred dollars for it so um that's actually quite um not expensive considering the hardware that you're paying for so, so that's not bad it. no no and you can just plug it into an xbox I, yeah i don't know if it works with pc yet but it's a it's a usb plug so i'm sure honestly like uh and, they'd be crazy not to yeah yeah i absolutely agree but um the other the, the thing that really excites me about this is the ability because 
because I know of plenty of um, disabled people, more people that are disabled um, in non-physical ways, I'd say, but um, I know quite a few disabled people, so it kind of makes me happy for this, and um, because whenever I see something like this, it just makes me think of like stuff like the the Kinect and the VR, where it's like, when someone does it right, like the Wii U remote with the, um, what, do, what do they call that again? The um, motion controls? Yeah, like as soon as they did that, everyone flocked to it saying it's going to be the, the new thing in gaming and everyone was copying it, right? Just like when the PlayStation put a uh, wine controller got in the vibration thing in the controller. A minor thing for the PlayStation, sure, but like everyone just put it in as a default setting in their um, consoles after that, you know? So when I see something like this, I'm, I'm really keen because it's like in a couple of years, I, I, I imagine everyone's going to have this and there's going to be like multiple different versions of this um, device that you can pick up at cheaper prices with like off brands and so forth, like a normal controller. So the, the gaming spectrum opens up to more more people, you know, and and that to me is something to, to be happy about in the industry. You know, a lot of bad stuff happening. Yeah, it's a huge untapped stuff. market. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, people talk about, like, coming from Microsoft, it's like, oh, these people are, like, the greediest fuckers ever. And it's like, well, to be fair, sure, they're doing it in terms of money, but, like, if it's to the benefit of both the organization that's um, selling the product and the um, consumer, then that's only really good business, you know? Like, there's, there's nothing you can complain about there is how business is meant to be done you know um see so yeah, i'm i'm keen for more stuff like that coming out that's where i hope the industry will go and i'm pretty sure it will uh, like of all the bad things we'll say i'm pretty sure they'll go down that road even if it takes them a couple years for sony and nintendo to pick up i have with well i think it sounds strange but i think the, there's a huge market out there for people who are uh, disabled or differently abled or whatever you want to call it. Mm. For for a variety, gaming is such uh, an immersive experience that can allow you to experience things that most people uh, can't or don't. And yeah. <laughs> who who has more difficulty, you know? Uh, doing a variety of different activities and you know people who are struggling in in that particular way mm. yeah if that makes sense yeah yeah absolutely um i think there's a lot bigger like i think it feels like the companies see them as a like because i look at demographics and i'm like oh that's a smaller demographic than let's say um the the um, young adults that play games, demographic and so forth like that, so they don't really factor it in. But it's like, when you do, when you're just looking at how many numbers there are and how many people would buy consoles, buy your games because they they want to get something to play with with this new controller, but it's like, you, mm -hmm. you just don't realize that that's actually quite a large number, you know? Like, it's, it's a lot higher than you would think it actually is like if you just look straight down to that specific demographic i i certainly agree with you there but um there needs to be some kind of push because uh, companies tend to be they only tend to go to where the money is you know larger mm. companies especially so really you're gonna we're gonna have to somehow make show them room. that yes they're actually is a lot of people and especially uh what they like a lot of money in certain areas yeah if I would, that they don't normally yeah. think about yeah. honestly i was thinking of like buying it just because like it would be a nice thing to have i was just like yeah i want to totally support this and have something just so anyone that comes over can play like literally anyone but i'm like uh, it is one hundred dollars, and I probably would never use it. But like, it's such a good idea that I've genuinely considered it. You know. Hello. Uh, move on to the next point. So, 
day one DLC in pre-orders. Um, sure. Did you have a PlayStation 2 or, or a console older than that? Hello? Uh, I've, I've only ever had one PlayStation. That was, I think, the original. Okay. So you probably remember then going down to the game store and just seeing like a new game or something like that. You just bought used to it play things it. like um, yeah. Three Age and the Xbox Three Sixty. When when that came out, they started to do this pre order thing, which you know it kind of seemed weird to me at first but i kind of just got on board with it because i always liked merchandise anyway for things so i'm like yeah you know make make an event out of it make a little culture thing that, that seems all right i guess but um it's kind of made this thing where it's um is making games seem less of an art and more of a product to pump out and it it puts in that kind of mindset for the devs and the producers that like for for things like day one DLC, which the problem or pre planned DLC, because I got into that argument where people want me to be extremely technical, um, where people are like, Oh, instead of making this full product and releasing it as that as a completely flawless, um non glitchy or buggy um product with everything included into a secrets and everything and adding cheese on top is like now they're like, Oh, we'll, we'll just do what we can. Um, we won't worry about bugs that much cause we can just patch it out later and we'll just cut up the other things, leave it out, sell it now so we can sell it on the time, get those pre-orders done, not worry about pushing those back, you know, meet the deadline. And then we'll um, sell the other shit that, you know, we we put as a, um, not a priority, but, you know, like a side task, maybe, like um, cheats in, in San and, oh, fuck, not San and Grace, um, Saints Row, for instance, that were just all fucking DLC and shit like that, you know, they're just selling it back to you in pieces, if you've seen that movie, you probably have, and it's just... It's just kind of disgusting. I mean, nowadays, because things have gotten so bad on that um, front, it, we kind of just look at it and it's like, well, that's to be expected. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm going to pay for it. I'm just like, no, just because it gets worse doesn't mean this is okay. You know, we, we've gone over red herrings and that's just all this is. You know, just don't lower the bar because things are getting yeah. worse, you know? But... You, it, it seems like the they want a lot of people it. tend to accept that this is the new normal mm, especially the kids they wouldn't even know the I think difference. when you've got companies multiple companies telling um everyone that this is just the way things are a lot of people just tend to accept it yeah because they, they especially in the younger them. crowd who haven't seen the evolution uh Especially when it comes from a producer or developer, they're like, oh, they're informed, they're in the industry, they gotta know better than everyone else, right? It's, it's just not always that way, just simply. Plus, with the industry, that there's, like, no real punishment for people lying, pretty much. Like, the amount of times people have lied about things. So, um... Another thing is DRM. I, I don't suppose you read up about what DRM is, or anything look could you refresh all right well drm is data rights management drm right is an acronym is for things like the nuvo and stuff like that where it's it's a kind of a thing that you have to sign in online like a, a system to kind of check that you're the person who purchased the product um with the people right and, so so like you're not cracking the game or you didn't pirate it or whatever but the problem is you know you have to check online which is one of the first problems as well as you know it it just slows down processes um like cpus on computers for instance because you're running multiple tasks and people can because 
that it's downloaded that way. People can just take your game away. For instance, with PT, which I've covered on before, is um, a game that was made by Hideo Kojima. Well, it wasn't made, but PT was um, playable trait uh, teaser for an upcoming game. And that was released for free on PlayStation 4s. And people downloaded it, they played it, they loved it. But because uh, Konami's like just hates him so much i wanted to remove his name from all of his previous games and take out any game that he had worked on so far apart from metal gear solid 5 because i wanted to make money off that make a fucking mint and um they took this away from actual owners so in other words if you the only way to actually have the game now is if you actually still have it downloaded because um you, you can't re-download the product well, you can't download it wow. away from stores and took it away from people because that's just how DRM works. It's, it, they can just do that. They can do it on Steam. They can do it on just about anything that has DRM, you know. So um, after that, they were selling PS4s that had, um, or at least claimed to have PT on it for like $1,400, right? Because people just love this teaser. Just a teaser, mind you. And people are willing to, to spend that much on a PlayStation 4 pre-owned just for this, you know? So, um, DRM, DRM's just that piece of shit that, like, is just everywhere. So, um, I, I hope that it's not going to stick around because it's getting a lot of bad flack, like Steam being like, oh, we don't give a shit about it. Um, that's getting some flack. So, GOG that came out, which is a new site, another thing kind of like steam straight up says that it doesn't have it so that's looking good it looks like that might become a thing but with hackers and pirates being more and more common it seems more like people um triple a game uh people at least would be like we need this you know like because demos are becoming less and less of a thing but like just from a demo for instance people are able to crack the game, you know, you get it early or whatever, and you can just crack the whole game from that, and then just um, release it to others, pirate it, um, torrent, so people can just download the full game from a bloody demo, you know, so they they set up um, DRM nowadays mainly because of that, and if demos are going to be a thing, then it's, DRM's probably going to stick around. Damn. Mm. Overall, tend to They tend to treat people like idiots. Mm. I was actually asking. I suppose to speak up. Uh, the possibility of of the gaming industry becoming a bit more like a politically correct and politicized, and uh, trying to shut down any uh, offensively uh, offensive ideas that are just. Uh, different from what's considered normal and like politically correct you know That's... discouraging people from different perspectives and trying to inform because you see that in a couple other industries yeah that's a good damn question i actually haven't really um thought about bringing up that point um Recently, that you talk about this, there was a um a tweet. CD so I think Project Red um brought out the creators of the Witcher series and um they're working on Cyberpunk. They recently put out a tweet um in response to something. I can't remember what they said, but the um the official Twitter for Cyberpunk said, "Did you just assume my gender?" And that created an entire fucking issue. For, for, for the dumbest fucking reason where people were like um hacking this site or, or not not hacking it but like finding out who the person was and that made the tweet and uh, I bet it was all over and like um spamming the post with like I'm not gonna pre order this, this is disgusting and stuff like that. Like it was just going off like a huge topic. And it's just like it was just one silly joke you know it's it's quite a known thing of just people getting triggered over their like 50 different genders we 
we got going on here. Yeah, um, people get really riled up. Yeah, they do. Um, I've actually talked about how he's kind of like so bad, like the um the trigger uh, culture, which I'm just going to mm. call it that for lack there of a um better term. Um, where it's like it's so common for people to get triggered over stuff like that that it's actually like people get just as triggered when they hear it. And I myself am kind of at fault at, at points like that. Like, when I see something like that in a game, it's, it just, like, riles me up. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? This is the dumbest shit ever. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's one of those sort of topics that it's like, it really doesn't need to be mm-hmm. touchy, but people just make it so much worse than it is by escalating. What I'm concerned about is, like... like... Um, the the chance of it being outright taken from games like it sometimes is when like for instance when games come from a different country like japan and it gets brought over then just to avoid um sort of controversies and allow for easier advertising and sales they the the translation team or localization team whatever you want to call it generally decide to edit the scene or just outright remove stuff like that so um that like different countries being poured over like games wise i think absolutely if anything that will increase but um with a team that i work with uh, (laughs) work with um that i know quite well you know i talk to them on a daily basis um it doesn't seem like they're ever going to change because like it, it goes past like half people's heads sometimes and it's it's more so like how concerned and self-aware these sort of devs are and like how big they are to how many people know them because like if it's in a western place like it's something like deadpool or something like that you know it's it's pretty big and they're well known for you know just not shying away from things you know like if ricky gervais was just like oh social commentary i, I can't avoid making a joke about fat people or something like that it's, it's like no he's loved ever so much more because with the climate getting more strict on it he, he seems like an outspoken hero to the people that are kind of sick of that culture you know so it's kind of a, like flipping a coin to me you know it, it could go either way it, it, it whichever way it will go it seems like one of those things that will go quick just like the loot box debacle but like yeah it's just something that will just change with the wind so quickly that sort of stuff that or it's just going to stick in limbo forever which is the, probably the more likely thing honestly just stay how it is forever like just as many people annoyed as there are loving that shit so um yeah it'd probably be removed from plenty of games that sort of ideology but there'll be just as many games built entirely around it <laughs> um but it's a good topic. It's a it's a good point that you um brought up. Certainly very relevant. <laughs> up is um false advertising and um you know like games can just have for instance that it says the game will do one thing and it will and then it actually ends up doing another without actually having it in there. Like how No Man's Sky never said that um that you said that it would have multiplayer functionality, right? And it didn't upon launch. There was a lawsuit, but I don't think that ever went through. The game was still up despite having, despite being directly a fucking scam. Like, yeah. It said one thing in advertising, and it didn't do it. That's false advertising. You can sue over that. And it just blows my mind that some games like that are allowed on there, but you know, Steam allows shit like that all the time, and I'm just seeing more and more of it, and it's, it's just annoying it. Honestly, how I want it to go is more people become transparent, but the community is certainly very outspoken about that sort of stuff, so it's becoming more and more of a yeah, you, thing. Yeah, they really do. need... Something like that sounds like blatant false advertising. You need to have a zero tolerance policy on that kind of thing. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. 
Like, it should be either, like, you've got, say, two weeks to either put in an update to implement whatever you said the game would have, or if you don't in those two weeks, then it just outright gets taken off. That, idealistically, would be what I want to see as a new rule for storefronts in things like Steam or whatever, you know? Idealistically, that's what I'd want to see. Some, something like that. Some sort of um, quality control, I guess you could call it. <laughs> um, Positive signs to where the, where the gaming industry could be headed, I think. I think I'd like to see more... Uh, interaction between the gaming industry and the education um uh what do you call it um Department? the education okay. you can't call it the education industry i'm thinking about um like it <laughs> this this cool of the education i'm thinking about like uh we need more we need more games with an educational side to them i think okay the education system, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm getting at. I think, I think if we, I think they need to start making some. It would be nice to see some games that weren't completely out of touch uh, with with younger audiences that w that actually did impart uh, lessons and information and help kids, you know, build more skills rather than actually like constantly being at odds with each other you know like you can't <laughs> like parents are always pissed off at their kids for uh playing games rather than doing homework but you know if you could combine the two at least in to some degree that was well thought out for actually doing more good than harm yeah that would be nice. That would be a nice future to live in. in. Early schooling, I could see many ways of that being possible to to develop like handwriting skills, reading and writing, um, you know, how to use certain computer processes, um, how to just understand like science science would be really easy subject to do that actually. Um just explaining processes, um Numbers and maths is like one that I just don't imagine going well with games, but you know you can do it. It's done. It's been done before. But um, something that schools would employ is something really hard to do that I just don't don't really see working too well. History wise, though, Assassin's Creed has done that. Um, one of the few good things about it, like with it being a yearly release. That I um I don't like the Assassin's Creed franchise anymore, but of of all the yearly release AAA sort of games around the time, I'm like, you know, at least it has that historical aspect. But um, every once in a while, it does get things wrong, like doing certain gestures or having a certain hat at the wrong day. And um, although it still does has taught some people, they've actually used it for their um like as the source of um information on certain um what is it essays and shit that they've been doing for it so it's got to be very specific to the um the time period that they're studying of course but you know some subjects like that is it is possible to do it it would be nice to see uh a bit more of a yeah, them to embrace. It'd be nice. It'd be nice to see some more ethical conduct uh, in regards to games like like historical games. Talk if the, weird, they um, was a, um, even put out retractions and say, "Hey, uh, we actually got this wrong." Hmm. Talking of which, um, I know if you saw that, that this is a good point you bring up actually. Now that I think about it, um, but like with Assassin's Creed, there was a um, a photo mode. Where like, cause cause you have to progress through the story and so forth to see everything, and in a history lesson you're just simply not going to be able to do that. So you get a photo mode where it's like you just get a camera, you spin it around through the world, get to see the models, get to see the environment, pulls up like a a little word thing, giving a little brief um description of like 
the thing or person location and like description of it and historical time periods and shit which is really cool but like and people would actually use it in history rooms right um so they actually put in a a mode that you can turn on that um i don't remember what it was called but it was essentially that like because you, you know in like the italian renaissance and so forth right with art they would generally have like male nude sculptures and stuff like that right just all over the place in art because the italians were like crazy for that right well in in the ancient egypt game assassin's creed origin that's the one that they implemented this in right yeah um they had sculptures like that specifically for the women that they would um they would just cover them off with like leaves or just get rid of the genitalia and um i kind of found that funny when like it's in a history lesson that they want to keep mm-hmm. it historically accurate as much as possible, like the devs were talking about it when they included the feature. But they included that feature because the history teachers just wanted to, you know, take it away. It, it kind of seems um, uh, contravening what they what they kind of want to teach people, you know. But um, it is interesting because they actually do use some games to a, to an extent to um teach yeah. the kids so yeah i don't know if it's going to pick up more or drop down less or what in the future but you know it, it is certainly interesting i don't I think we've ever seen a game that's game. sort of balanced at 50 50 mm. tame and, and yeah um to see which is recently popping up one of the bigger um good things about the industry that they've been implementing recently um that everyone wants to see more of everyone's talking about it is cross-platform play i don't know if you heard about that if you know what that is or um do you uh ethan I haven't, but it sounds sounds great. All right, it um, sounds great. So, are we talking like like uh, Xbox and PlayStation players playing the same games on- online, or, yes, or something exactly, more like within the company? That's exactly what you're doing. You're playing the same game with people, like in the in the exact same game, in the same match, and everything, um, from different platforms. So, like a mobile player can play this game with someone on the PC, for instance, you know? And um, it's brought up a big discussion of, like, if it's a shooter, online competitive shooter, people are like, I don't want that because PC players will have an advantage with the mouse support. And while I'm in agreement that they do, if it's made That could optional, be a little unfair. Yeah, but as I'm saying, it, if it's made optional... You know, like, with Fortnite, you've actually got to enable the option to play with your friends on cross-platform play, right? Then it's like, that's not a fault of the game for having that feature. It's your fault for enabling it, you know? You're you're putting that yeah. handicap on yourself by doing this. So, um, I honestly fully embrace this um, pl- cross-platform play. However, Sony doesn't, if you heard. They've been getting a lot of backlash because they're like, the only people we do have cross-platform play, actually, everyone, is only just with yeah. iOS I really like the sound of this. Apple there's a really good mobiles, thing. Uh, there's a really good, yeah, good reason for this with... twin up. Place. Yeah? I play... I'm sorry, you cut out after I play. Can you um just repeat what you said? Yeah. I'm I'm sorry, I didn't hear any of that. Um uh, there's something else I wanted to say too is um games that like I play this I play uh, an online martial arts game called Absolver, right? And uh Australia on on Steam, but I think it might be a little bit more popular on certain consoles. So, and I think uh, they're actually kept. I'm I could be wrong here, but I think they kept separate. But uh, it would be nice to see 
you know, more crowded servers, like more more people in in as uh, like actually playing together who where yeah. it might be quite empty and difficult to find other people to play with because of your the combination of both your location and the, the device or you're playing on. Talking of um this whole subject, one of the biggest things about it I'd say is um the thing with Bethesda's new Because that way you can establish game. like uh communities. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It's, it is a very nice feature. Um, you can even do talk chats. Like, if you are got your mic in in your um, Xbox, for instance, you don't, like, if you're using the game chat, then I've actually been able to talk to people that are on their phones on the, on the go, like, playing Fortnite. And I was just able to talk through the game chat. So, yeah, it, it certainly can. It's, it's pretty good stuff. Um, but one of the bigger things about this um, is the card game because like no one's got a, a disadvantage on a card game right it, regardless of what controller they're using it's like it's a card game you know there's there's no advantage or disadvantage for the console right so um, Bethesda really is pushing this card game to be cross platform play they're like if your console doesn't have a, like, if your console isn't going to allow us to do cross-platform play, then we're not going to sell it on this platform, right? And the Sony, and then Sony's been saying that they don't want it to be cross-platform play with Microsoft or Nintendo, right? Because, you know, for, for multiple decades, Sony's had a fucking grudge against Nintendo for refusing their, their console idea and going with that fucking other movie joint for theirs like that abomination that they made so um Bethesda is straight up like we're not releasing this game on the PS4 if they don't allow us to do it you know they're taking such a bold stance so cross-platform play is certainly going to be a thing that I think most online games are going to so they're really putting their foot down damn straight and I'm actually very proud of them doing that of all the things Bethesda is doing right now most of them I hate that one's the one thing that I fully support with them. And it's like, yep, go ahead, take that stance. Sony needs someone to to really step down and say, you know, if if you don't allow cross platform play, then just fuck you, you know, because like right now they're they're such top dogs that they're like, oh, we can get away with it. We don't need to work because the reason why they're against it is because when people make online purchases, like for instance, they want to buy in. A, a skin in Fortnite, right? If they're doing it on Xbox, then Microsoft gets the money for that, right? That's why they're concerned. They're not concerned that like, oh no, we're we're connecting with our old rivals. We hate them. It's like no, they 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 see it as them claiming their potential money, and. The problem with companies is they always see it as like potential money not being gained is money lost when it's in actual fact just not true because they don't have that money to begin with, you know, because we're talking theoretically here. So that money is kind of like with the refund policy, the whole concept of why that came to fruition. It's not because you're losing money, but you'll be getting more money in return over time. So it's just bad business practice to just be like, no, nah, if we can't have all the money, then we just won't approve this thing. It's like you're making such a bad long-term business um, agreement, you know? <laughs> if uh, Sony will end up um, buckling under to a, you know, kind of just like, I guess we'll have to do it or they'll just be like no we're not doing it ever you know i think eventually they'll they'll crack i think by the time ps5 comes out because that's not too far off now they'll probably probably buckle around then i think that's one hits on a big problem is that larger companies seem almost scared to take risks Mm. yeah when you when you're too comfortable when you feel like um you've already made it that you can always make a stable profit like for instance if you've ever had a stable job and it's like 
oh, but I'm getting sick of this job and I'm, I'm not liking it and or maybe something's gone bad and like you see another option, right? And it's like, but I've got to take the risk of um, moving from my current job to that job. Then you're just really scared to because you're you got a stable job where you are, right? So, so you're just like, it's it's just too risky. I'll just stick to this one. It's always risk versus reward with business. Being so. safe is that some point someone else is going to take a big risk and they're going to far outstrip you in terms of their success. And your company is just going to be left in the dust. Absolutely. Yeah. This has happened multiple times before and it can always happen again. No one stays on top forever. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, yeah, it's nice having you back. I'm I'm really surprised not only how committed to this video you were, but um how And I can I can see your channel growing quite a lot and you know, if I can help a little bit with that, then great. Mm. Yeah, even if just a bit. Um, I hope your channel grows as well. Um, I think you popped up to 19 now, which is good for you. Because I think you're on 17 when I subscribe. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah, I hope, honestly, for the best from um, the games industry. I hope that it, everything <laughs> goes well from here. You know, they... they Look, man, happy, okay. So that's what I was doing. And... Um, uh, thank you all for watching. Um, just click on the top right corner to see his channel. Um, 